Hey everybody, it's Crazy and Carol. How you doing? Today I'm going to be 3D printing a 1x2x5. So, do you notice anything different? Maybe about the quality of the video? Yeah, I got a new camera. Could have just said that, but you know. How does it look? I got a new camera. It should be more high quality, hopefully. Let me know what you think of it down below. I hope it looks better. Um, so. Bit of a little bit of a bit of a story. Um, I got a 3D printer a few months back, and uh, I was pretty excited because there was a big phase of 3D printing puzzles, and I was excited to use it. Unfortunately, I was really busy and never got around to using it. But now that I have more time, slightly more time, um, I decided let's use it for two main reasons. One, because I had more time, but two, um, because of COVID-19, people are using their 3D printers to print things like parts for masks and stuff like that that they can send to hospitals. So I was like, hey, I have a 3D printer and I should probably start using it. So I decided the first thing I'd print is some stuff to send to hospitals. Uh, I printed these visors. I don't have one on me right now because I already sent them. But I did take a picture of them. Here they are. I also um, have been printing these. They are these sort of straps that like fit around your head for masks. And I'm just sending them to local hospitals or whoever needs them. Obviously this is not like life-saving tool, but it's still helpful. If you have a 3D printer and some extra filament to spare, definitely consider printing something. This takes like a few minutes to print. Uh, it doesn't use that much filament at all, and yeah. I'll leave links to the um, 3D printed like Thingiverse files in the description box down below if anyone wants to check those out. But yeah, I got a whole bunch of them right here and I gotta send these to hospitals sometime soon. But one thing that I've really been wanting to use a 3D printer for is puzzles, because I like puzzles. I've seen like years ago videos of like Lego Boy Z3, now known as Z3 Cubing print, um, like extensions to put on puzzles to make to modify them uh, printed one by two by two and a one by two by five and I was like I want a one by two by five because it's not something you just like buy normally and so I printed it the design for the one by two by five is by Corin puzzle you've probably heard of him he does some really cool mods I'll leave links to his stuff down below as well but I thought it would just be the whole setup 3d printer and print stuff not like that. Something I wasn't really expecting with the whole 3D printer thing is how tedious it can be. So, there's something called calibration. I have an Ender 3 Pro. Uh, I don't know a lot about other printers, but the way my printer is built, there's like a bed that the printer is on with some knobs at the bottom that have springs and they bring the bed up and down. And then of course there's the actual filament tube or the nozzle that shoots out the filament to print the things, and you need to have the right amount of space between the nozzle and the bed. So that the filament goes up properly. It can't be too close, because then the filament just gets smeared and can't come out, but it can't be too far, because then it just comes out as a mess and doesn't stick to the bed. The bed also has to be level, so you don't want it to be too slanted, or else obviously that won't work. There's not a very efficient way, I think, to calibrate it. Uh, I set this up in March, probably, uh, mid-March and I've spent hours calibrating it. So what you do is you slip some paper in there. I have this program um, that I put on the little chip that goes into the printer to go to sort of key places on the bed and you slide some paper under it and if it feels slightly frictiony but kind of not really not too tight not too loose there's not really a specific feeling you just have to kind of guess that it's good. I also have a model for squares that I print just to basically print something that doesn't use too much filament and I can see if the filament goes on the bed properly or not. I first printed the visors. They took quite a, lot, a while to perfect, but that was my first time using the printer and I thought once I get this, it'll probably be good for a while. I was wrong. My 3D printer at some point just sort of died and it actually happened on camera. I was starting to print for a 1x2x5 and so I calibrated it. It was pretty good, though I did notice some slight issues so I decided, hey, I'm gonna fix this. And then that's when things got dark. The filament just wasn't sticking. It would like 
catch on the nozzle and fly to random places. I don't know how it got so far and it didn't even stick to the bed a little bit. It was really annoying. I was like, I don't have that much time right now because I still have things to do even though I'm in quarantine. So I dedicated a day to try to fix it. I took apart the nozzle, tried to see if it was clogged, switched out filament, you know, did everything, disassembled the printer, re-leveled it, changed screws with all sorts of tools. None of it helped. At this point, um, it's like this part of the story occurred like last week and I set up the 3D printer in March. So I finally figured out what was wrong. Well, I knew it was wrong. It wasn't, the filament wasn't sticking to the bed, but a solution was found. One of the greatest achievements of all time. Yeah. Coat the bed in a glue stick. The filament sticks. Can't believe it. I've got a 3D printer, which is pretty expensive and some pretty high tech stuff. And the only way to get it to work is a glue stick. Someone please tell me if they've had trouble with calibrating and filament sticking. I re like researched so much stuff and none of it was working. We tried putting the nozzle super close, but then it wouldn't work, obviously, because it can't be too close. Too far, it doesn't stick. Sometimes we would print something and it would like, like a square, for instance, we print a square and it would turn out great. So we're like, let's check it one more time. And then it just completely messed up. We don't even touch the knob or anything. So I seriously don't know what's up with that. But yeah, luckily I have glue because it doesn't have glue. So you just glue it. <laughs> you put glue on the bed and then you print. I know this is a long story, but it was a long process. So I printed one by two by five. All you have to do really to print something that you don't design is just download the file, uh, put it into this system I have called Cura, and you put it onto the little SD cards that come to the printer and you print it. I printed um, one batch with basically all the pieces. It was extremely disorganized because I suck at doing it. You're supposed to like, in Cura, make the pieces look like nice, I'm assuming, so it's like more organized, but mine were sort of just all over the place, but it worked. There's also a pin that needs to go in the 1x2x5 to actually help the two sides move. Um, and I printed that separately because it needed um, sort of something called four perimeters. Basically four sort of shells. This is the only way I can explain it. But all you need to know is that I printed that separately. After maybe five hours, uh, the print was done. 3D printing does take a long time because you're literally just layering plastic on top of itself until you build something. But I finally had some pieces and all there was left to do was remove them, which is hard <laughs> because I glued the filament onto the bed. You just gotta use a considerable amount of force. I just sanded down the sort of rough edges and took a look at how the puzzle worked. It seemed pretty decent. And so all I need to do is paint it. Unfortunately, I didn't have any, I don't have spray paint on me and I'm not gonna go out to get some. I couldn't use my usual oil technique that I do with my mods. Oil darkens the puzzle, but this is white. I have white filament, so that wouldn't work. So I use nail polish. That sucked. I just like literally held the puzzle out of a window and just painted. The paint job was pretty terrible, but you know, it would have to, it would have to do. To assemble the puzzle, you basically fit the edges onto the corners and then they basically create a hook that fit into the middle piece. And then for the stickers, I just found a random set of extra stickers. They weren't enough because they were for a three by three. I stuck what I could on and then used a template from one of the stickers to basically cut out my own sticker. Yes, I know the sticker job is terrible. So yeah, that's the completed puzzle. It was quite a long process, but here it is. It's quite
quite loose, literally like my hands during a solve. And it also was extremely catchy and scrapey because bits of plastic was just sort of catching everywhere. But overall, I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out. The turning isn't horrible. It's just super like, you know, loose, but I wasn't expecting very, very high quality because it's not about the turning. It's about the actual design. So this was a pretty fun experience. This is probably just one of many 3D printed puzzles to come. Uh, if there's a specific puzzle that you know of, or maybe like extensions to fit onto an already produced cube, or just sort of any 3D puzzle thing, or just anything you want me to print, leave me some suggestions down below. But anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time on Crazy Me Carol. Bye.